300 pesos, you are already insured. Siguro mga 90% sure ako na may magtatanong nito. 50, 30, 20. It's a big no-no for me. Parang kakahol ko lang this week, next week may haul again. Siyempre, ubus-ubus talaga yung pera natin ng ganon. Hindi talaga ako fan ng mga designer items. Buenos dias! Rhea Buet here and I am back with a new vlog and for today's vlog, we'll be talking about budgeting, saving, and investing and I will also be sharing a very important discovery that can be a help and would be beneficial for all of us. So let's take a break sa Rhea Boodles muna and let me take this opportunity to be able to share my personal experiences when it comes to reaching that goal, when it comes to being financially stable and overall secured. But before we proceed, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer that I am not a professional financial advisor and I really hope that you guys will learn something from me today. Now, starting with the most important topic of this vlog, it would be Sing Life Philippines. If you are not yet familiar with Sing Life Philippines, they are a mobile-first insurer that has financial and technological backing from its headquarters in Singapore. What's nice about this is that you can quickly access them through your phone and all you need to do is to download the app Gcash and I'm pretty sure a lot of you or majority of you already have the app. Now, if you don't have the app yet, go download Gcash now. From your Gcash homepage, click on G Insure and you will find all of the products that Sing Life Philippines offers and they have the cash for income loss and they also have the cash for dengue cost. Today, we are going to talk about the cash for dengue cost and if you are going to ask me kung ano ba yung cash for dengue cost and ano ba yung benefits na makukuha ko sa product na to. Cash for dengue cost is definitely a must-have, especially during these tough times because guys, it doesn't only protect you from high medical cost if nagka-dengue kayo. Actually, sobrang wish ko na sana available na tong product na to way, way back and sana alam ng parents ko na this product existed or what. Pero syempre, ang tagal na nun eh, hindi ko na maalala as in sobrang bata ko pa noon ay had dengue. And syempre, kung meron na tong product na to, edi sana hindi na ganun ka laki yung medical expenses ng parents ko sa akin, di ba? But still, I availed this product just to be safe and sure now. Kasi even if we're just at home, Anytime pwede tayong magkadengge ulit. Hindi naman siya ibig sabihin na nagkadengge na ako before, hindi na ako pwedeng magkadengge ulit ngayon. Just to be sure lang talaga, at least meron na ako nitong cash for dengue cost. And guys, you know what? Aside from that, this product can also protect you from unforeseen expenses na due to COVID-19. So, can you imagine na you paid for the cash for dengue cost, pero meron pang extra help na during this pandemic? which is it covers also yung mga expenses natin for COVID-19. Knock on wood, sana syempre lahat tayo safe. Pero yun, just in case nang talaga, this product also covers yung mga medical expenses for COVID-19 cases. Now, I'm sure you guys are also wondering kung magkano ba yung cash for dengue cost. Guys, believe it or not, this is only 700 pesos per year and you can get 421,500 pesos coverage. For me ha, compared to other insurance brands or products out there, this is pretty much affordable already and super sulit talaga siya. And for 700 pesos, Sobrang sulit. And not only that, guys, hindi complicated yung application. Like, you don't need to fill a lot of blanks or questions. Like, you just need to answer, like, a few questions sa G-Insure app, then you're all set. Who can avail the cash for dengue cost? If you are 18 to 54 years old, then pwedeng pwede kayo mag-avail ng products ni Sing Life Philippines. And aside from that, of course, you have to make sure that you are fully verified on Gcash app. Then, of course, dapat you are in good health and not a confirmed COVID-19 case. And last but not the least, you need to be a Filipino citizen or a foreigner who has legal residency here in the Philippines. Next question is, can we buy it for someone else? Honestly, guys, ito rin yung una kong inisip when I heard about this product. Kasi, of course, I do have my loved ones. I have my parents, I have my partner, si Jeff, my fiancé. So, syempre, naisip ko rin na, syempre, kung protected ako, kailangan protected din sila. Sad truth is, hindi pwede. We cannot buy or purchase this for someone else. 
Although, you can cover them naman as your dependents if you avail of this policy for yourself. So, there are only a few qualifications needed for your dependents. So, ang pinakauna would be, syempre dapat legal spouse siya, 18 to 54 years old again. And then, if life partner mo siya, dapat live-in na kayo for a minimum of 2 years. And also, pwede rin siya for legitimate or illegitimate children. Then remember, kailangan good health din kayo with no confirmed na COVID-19 case. And last but not the least, syempre kailangan Filipino citizen or a foreigner with legal residency here in the Philippines. Now, of course, Cash for Dengue Cost has different coverage levels. So they have the bronze, which is 300 pesos per year. And they also have the silver, which is 550 per year. And then yung pinaka gold nila is the 700 pesos per year. So imagine guys, for as low as 300 pesos, you are already insured. So guys, if you can avail now, I tell you, avail it now. Because honestly, we can never predict the future. We can never say kung ano mayayari bukas and the next week, the next month, the next year. So as much as possible, if you wanna really wanna save up and Ayaw niyo yung masyadong malaki yung gastos niyo if ever nagkasakit kayo or what, especially for dengue or for COVID, then guys, go ahead and avail cash for dengue cost now. So that's it for Sing Life Philippines. Now, if you have any other questions about cash for dengue cost, then feel free to comment them down below and I will be more than happy to answer it for you guys. So there. Now, let's move on to the next part of this vlog. Well, I did ask you guys to send in your questions sa aking IG story. Anything about budgeting, saving, and investing. And you guys sent a lot. As in, a lot. Pumili na ako ng konting questions na I feel like a lot of you have been frequently asking me about that. And yung mga iba siguro we can talk about it on a different vlog na lang. But, ayun, I did pick some ano, interesting questions today that... I am super excited to answer for you as well. Now, let's start with the first question. How do you save despite all the expenses you have? Do you have a budgeting format for this? Well, to answer your question, yes, I do have a budgeting format and I only follow the simplest form that you can find online. Ito, nahanap ko lang din siya online way, way back and it would be the 50, 30, 20. Now, 50% means that ito yung makupunta sa rent, sa groceries, sa bills, and yung payment ko for cash for dengue cost. So, dito ko siya kinukuha sa 50% na to, and ang tawag ko dito ay essentials. 30% naman, ito yung percentage ng for saving ko and for future investment. So, medyo malaki. Yung iba kasi ginagawa nila, yung 30% is for their other expenses. Pero ako, mas gusto ko siyang gawin na mas malaki yung percentage ko for savings, of course. And then, 20% is would be for non-essentials. Ito yung mga gastos ko for mga online shopping, yung mga ganun, yung mga for my wife. Months lang. So, dito ko kinukuha sa 20% na to. And aside from that, guys, ang pinaka-importante is to know your income and to track your expenses. Yun lang yung only way talaga for you to be able to budget your gastos. For monthly ba yan? Or for daily? Kasi pag hindi mo natatrack talaga yung income mo or yung expenses mo, hindi mo na alam na ganito lang pala yung pumapasok sa account mo and then ganito kalaki pala yung ginagastos mo, ba? So, ako, I used to do it parang digitally. Like, I have a planner before na digital. Pero, for me, hindi siya gaano ka-effective. So, I went back to, you know, the usual notebook. Ganon. So, mas effective pa rin yun sa akin. Kasi, every now and then, mabilis na ako mag-update ng income ko kung may pumasok na pera. Ganon and all. So, mas effective yung way na yun for me. Next question is, how do you control yourself from spending online? You know what? This is such a big temptation talaga for me kasi everything is super convenient na. You can shop online through your phone, through your laptop. As in, sobrang easy na lang siya compared to before na kailangan mo pang pumunta sa store or what. Lalo na, alam, alam niyo, uso yung mga Lazada, Shopee, and all. So, honestly, hindi ko talaga siya naiiwasan. Pero, yung pag-budget or yung pag-gastos ko ng online shopping, yun ako control ko. So, paano ko nga ba siya ginagawa? As a content creator, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen most of my mga um, Rhea Boodles na vlogs, yung mga hauls ko. Kasi yun talaga yung ginagawa ko. And yun yung talaga yung work ko. I do mga content na hauls or what. Pero hindi ko siya ginagawang monthly hauls, if you can notice. 
Siguro mga every other month or basta pinispace out ko talaga yung hauls ko. Ibig sabihin, nasa space out din yung gastos ko. Kasi if ginawa ko siya haul this month, next month haul again or parang kaka-haul ko lang this week, next week may haul again, syempre ubus-ubus talaga yung pera natin ng ganun. So kailangan is space out talaga and kailangan na pa-plan mo rin talaga yung content mo na maayos. How are you budgeting your shoe collection? Do you limit yourself like 30,000 for shoes per month? Alam ko talaga na tatanungin nyo to sa akin, as in, siguro mga 90% sure ako na may magtatanong nito. <laughs> to be honest, hindi ako gagastos ng 30,000 worth for a pair of shoes. And per month pa ha, so imagine maglalabas ako ng 30,000 per month for a shoes. It's a big no-no for me, hindi ako bibili ng ganun kamahal na shoes. I always make sure na nabibili ko sila in retail price, hindi in resale price. Because if binili mo siya ng resale price, for sure na abot ko talaga ng 30k or more. Pero kung hindi ko naman nakuha yung pair na yun for retail price, then bye-bye na. Hindi ko na siya bibilhin. Not unless na gustong gusto ko yung pair, then I would definitely save up for it. Pag-iipunan ko talaga siya. Hindi ko siya bibilhin agad-agad. Kasi, syempre, ang dami ko pang gastos na kailangan isipin kesa sa shoes lang, ba? And I also need to pay, of course, yung binabayaran ko for the cash for the ko. So, kailangan may mga budget talaga tayong sineset aside for mga ganun. Yung mga for essentials and for your emergency funds. So, mas importante na may natatabi tayo for emergency funds. So, Yun. What is your main source of income and what are your side hustles? For me, ang pinaka-importante is to build multiple income streams talaga. Like, I do not stick on just one income line or stream. Um, I find other ways talaga to earn money. One of which would be the active income stream, which is yung pag-offer ko ng services ko. I do work for it. So, it's gonna be the content creation part. And aside from that, I also do some work as an art director and and then I also handle mga other brands. So I do social media management. So yun yung active income stream ko. Now aside from that, I also have a passive income stream. And this would be yung mga affiliations ko where I earn commissions. So ito yung mga pa swipe up links ko sa inyo. Um, I do not earn instantly from this. So hindi big sabihin na may na bumili dun sa swipe up link ko agad-agad may makukuha akong money so hindi naman ganun like syempre kailangan pa nila i-evaluate kailangan pa nila tingnan or what basta may mga ganong factors pa and then of course at the end of the month may nakukuha akong commission or may nakakash out ako from it and hindi lang siya yung parang kung kailan ako nag-share ng swipe up links even yung mga previous haul vlogs ko na may mga links I also earn from that so nandyan lang siya Kahit hindi ko siya pinopromote, as long as may nakakakita ng vlogs na yun, may nag-click doon, I earn from it. So, yun yung passive income stream ko. And then, um, lastly, I also have my profit income stream. And this would be my business caviar. Um, hindi naman ganun kalaki yung profit ko or yun income ko sa business na to. Pero, kahit pa paano may income pa rin. So, I still consider this as um, an income stream. How do you determine which clothing items are worth it to splurge on? Hindi talaga ako fan ng mga designer items. Like, I do have like a few items or pieces na designer. Pero, hindi ako yung type na as in collector talaga. I think, isa din yung factor is hindi ako collector. I only buy a piece, a designer item or a piece if feeling ko lang talaga ma ROI ko siya or magagamit ko siya ng how many times. Parang in that way, feeling ko yung ginastusan ko na ganun kalaki, at least nasulit ko siya or at least nagka-project ako or what. Parang ganun siya for me. Like, hindi ako bibili lang ng basta-basta ng clothing item or ng piece, especially if it's designer. Then I feel like hindi ko siya na ROI, then hindi ko siya bibilhin. Basta as long as feeling mo na ma-ROI mo siya or magkakaroon ka ng return of investment, then go for it. How do you manage your finances as a couple? Do you and Jeff follow a system? For now, the simplest system that we both follow would be the Ambagan system. <laughs> we also split expenses. Like all of the house expenses, yung mga groceries, yung mga gas, yung mga bills, lahat yung naka-split na since we're living together naman. So, yun lang talaga yung 
simple system na pinafollow namin ni Jeff for now. Pero syempre, if we're both married na, um, definitely maggagawa kami ng joint account wherein doon na kami maglalagay ng aming budget, ng aming pera na gagastusin namin for the baby, for the house, for the pills, for etc. etc. So, ayun. Where do you invest? Mutual funds, stocks, forex, crypto? Alam nyo guys, sobrang curious talaga ako sa mga ganito. Like crypto or even yung Axi. I've heard a lot about this but never ko siyang trinay because I think I'm just too scared to risk or to invest in those or feeling ko kulang lang din talaga ako ng research. Yun yung totoo. So I think I need to do my research more kasi syempre kung mag invest ka, kailangan knowledgeable ka about it. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-invest lang ng invest. And for now, yung investment na nakikita ko would be yung property investment kasi meron kaming condo na nabili na way, way back and hanggang ngayon na sa amin pa rin siya. We are actually planning to turn it into an Airbnb or siguro mga long-term rental. So, pinag-iisipan pa namin syempre kasi kailangan pa namin gastusan yun for renovation and all. Yun yung condo namin before, if naaalala nyo. And then the next would be um, I am also saving up for another investment or for another business na inisip ko with my parents or, I don't know, with my friends or with Jeff. Iniisip ko pa kasi kung mag-open ba kami ng car wash or ng um, water filling station or laundry. Ewan ko pa, yun yung mga options na iniisip namin. So, sana magawa namin siya after our wedding next year. So, yun yung goal namin. And of course, guys, let us not forget that our health is also an investment. So, guys, don't forget to invest on yourself, on your health. And again, guys, don't forget about cash for dengue cost. And aside from that, Sing Life Philippines has other products that you can check out. So, Last question would be, what is your financial goal for the next five years? No una ko tong nabasa, parang wow ang lalim. <laughs> Alam niyo yun, parang hindi ko siya na expect. Pero I'm so happy that you threw in this question and napaisip talaga ako. And with that, I came up with SIM. It's shorter for simple. So S is for saving up for the future, of course, for our house or for future businesses or investments. So, yun yung goal ko talaga for the next five years. And then for I naman, it's for invest. It's also important for me for the next five years to be able to invest in businesses talaga na wherein yung passive income ko is medyo stable na rin. Then for N naman, this is to minimize my unnecessary gastos. For me, importante rin talaga to kasi may sinasabi sila or may tinatawag silang long-term goal and yung immediate goal. So yung long-term goal ko would be of course yung pag-save and yung pag-invest and then yung immediate goal ko talaga would be is to minimize my gastos. Kasi guys naman, if hindi ko na minimize yun, paano ko i-achieve yung long-term goal ko, de ba? So, in order for us to achieve that long-term goals, we need to address our immediate goals or we need to accomplish our immediate goals. So, there, we always need to take baby steps. So, with that baby steps, mas malaking achievement yung nagagawa natin. So, Yon yun na yung share ko sa inyo today. I hope you guys learned or enjoyed watching this video. Alam ko sobrang ibang iba to sa mga vlogs na ginagawa ko. Pero, syempre, kailangan din serious tayo sometimes. And we also need to, you know, talk about this. And kung hindi pa natin to pag-usapan kailan, ba? So, there! Anyway, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram account. It's at I am Rebwe. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if hindi pa kayo subscribe. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Bye!